Friends and physicists, I am doing something totally crazy and that thing is wearing a black hoodie instead of a black t-shirt. How crazy is that? You weren't expecting that. I'm sure you did not expect to log into these videos and see me in a hoodie, but it's happening. It's really cold out there and I hope this doesn't screw up the whole video because there's all this like weird writing on it. It's the only black hoodie I have. Um, anyways, this week we are studying magnetic fields. We are switching gears a little bit from electricity. You're going to find out very quickly that the two areas are very related. Electricity and magne magnetic fields are very related. In fact, it is moving charges that create magnetic fields. You never knew that before. Now you do. Maybe you knew it before if you took physics. Um, anyways, let's start. First, the quote of the week. It's from a meditation teacher named Sharon Salzberg, who I have a lot of respect for. And she says, you can search throughout the entire universe for someone who is more deserving of your love and kindness than you are yourself. And that person is not to be found anywhere. You, yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and kindness. And sometimes I wonder what the world would look like if we we're all a little bit kinder to ourselves. Because something tells me that if we were kinder to ourselves, we'd probably be a lot kinder to each other as well. And I'll leave it at that. Um, why do we care? So a second ago, I said that it is actually moving charges that create magnetic fields. And we live in a world filled with all these moving charges, right? We have these power lines above us with very high currents moving through them. And if those currents actually do create magnetic fields, are we bathing ourselves in dangerous magnetic fields just by being in this electrified world? Um, we will explore that question later in this chapter, and by the end of it, you will actually know whether or not it's dangerous, and you will know whether it's stronger than the, the uh, magnetic field actually created by the Earth itself, and we'll get there. So, um, how was magnetism even discovered? All right, well, it happened, like most discoveries on Earth, because of pure serendipity. So, magnetic phenomena were first observed at least 2,500 years ago in fragments of iron ore found near the ancient city of Magnesia. Do you guys see something there? Possible reason why magnets are called magnets? Um, it's now called Manisa, and it's in western Turkey. And so, obviously, folks started playing with these so-called magnets from Magnesia. Um, can you imagine how cool it must have been to discover the first magnet, right? You have uh, a, basically a, a rock that you find out has certain effects on other materials, um, like, for example, like, a, like other metals, like a floating needle, for example. Um, it had to seem like magic, all right? And I haven't checked this, up, checked this out yet, but... I wonder if the word magic is related to the word magnetism, um, and I would love if anyone would love to, to, to explore that question and send me an email if they uh, have a good answer. All right. Um, I want to begin by talking about the one magnetic field that you should all know because it is constantly around us all the time, and if this magnetic field did not exist, it's very likely you would not have existed, and that is the Earth's magnetic field. Why is it so important? Okay, so let's, let's start here. We have a, a planet Earth, right? And on that planet Earth, we have this, you know, what we call the North Pole and the South Pole. Those are the geographic North and South, right? But the entire Earth behaves as though there is a magnet inside of it, like a bar magnet inside of it. Right, with a south end here and a north end here. So there is this very peculiar reality that the geographic north pole of the Earth is actually the magnetic south pole. All right? um, and so when your compass actually points to north, it's actually pointing to the magnetic south, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so um, the way that magnetic field lines work is that they, they always emanate from the, the north pole of a magnet and end on the south pole, okay? So you have this whole very intense magnetic field of the Earth that looks like this. Ah, sorry, backwards. Leaving North Pole, entering the South Pole, okay? So 
why is this so important? Okay, well, so here's the thing. We also, as you know, we have the sun over here. Right? And we normally think the sun is very happy and very beneficial because it you know, provides the energy we need for life on Earth, and that's all very cool and very important. But it also is a, a ion generator, okay? It is creating these solar winds made up of, of, of high-energy plasma, which is um, basically ionized atoms, right? So you're, you're throwing um, all these very high-energy electrons over to the Earth high energy electrons over to the earth, right? And if they, if they were able to interact with, with, with life, right, what do you think would happen? Well, what do we know about high energy anything that's really, really small? It can knock out genes, right? It has this, this, this ability to actually change DNA, okay? But what does the magnetic field do? Well, it turns out that when a charged particle sees a magnetic field line, it's like, like roller coaster time, okay? It is like straight up amusement park situation where it goes over there and it's like, oh, I see this magnetic field line. Suddenly, I want to do a loop, de 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 loop around it. All right, that's one of the first things you need to know about magnetic fields is that when charges move through them, they want to move in circles. And we're going to find out more why that is in a second. Okay, but it's it's kind of this wild thing that instead of these electrons coming in and messing with, with genes of any kind of life, whether it's animal life or human life or whatever, right, they kind of get stuck in these, in these field lines and they start whipping around in little circles and it, it basically takes the wind out of their sails and they can't come in and be all high energy and knock out genes from, from life on Earth. All right, now this has another really interesting byproduct, okay, and that byproduct is that you have a situation where these are whipping around these field lines so fast that they're knocking into atoms and molecules inside the air and that excites those atoms and molecules. So the electrons inside those atoms and molecules will then rise up to a higher energy level. And then if you know from chemistry that if you rise to a higher energy level and fall back down, what do you release? Well, you release little photons, right? little high energy photons. And what are photons? They're just light, right? What do you think that light is? That these solar winds that are spinning around the magnetic field lines are releasing. What is that light? You all have probably heard of it or seen it at some point. It's the auroras, the aurora borealis. So when we see these beautiful pictures of green and, and, and blue and it, like turquoise lights that happen in northern um, regions much more often. Um, the reason why that's happening is because of this excitation that these electrons whipping around these magnetic field lines, striking molecules, releasing light. That light is the beautiful auroras that we see. Why does it happen more at the northern hemisphere? Well, because just like with electric fields, magnetic fields are stronger where they're packed together, okay? So at the pole of the Earth, these magnetic field lines are all like kind of converging in a one point. So that means much stronger magnetic field lines. That means much stronger effect that it's having on these electrons, which means much stronger auroras effects. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I wish we could take a field trip where we all go and check out the auroras now so you can see this happening in real life. Um, and needless to say, it's also this Earth's magnetic field is not only life-saving in the way that it protects us from the solar radiation, but it's also life-saving in the sense that it has allowed humans to navigate for literally thousands of years, right? As soon as we discovered these, these magnets, we were able to make little comp compasses that allowed us to navigate and locate ourselves throughout the Earth. Um, it made it easier to navigate the seas, um, it, you know, obviously in addition to the stars and all that. And life became a little bit easier. The, in fact, you could say this is one of the first um, real technologies that, that allowed humans to, to grow and expand. Um, so that's pretty cool. Still begs the question, why do we even have a magnetic field? What's that all about? Why is there this like little bar magnet in the earth, right? So you may know that in the outer core, there is all this swirling um, liquid iron, okay? And iron has, obviously, a whole bunch of electrons in it, 
Okay. Now, what causes magnetic fields? Moving charges. So this is something that still isn't fully, fully understood. And this could be an interesting thing if anyone wants to go into geology or geophysics for you to continue to explore. But these swirling, like iron, right, liquid iron, with all these electrons is actually able to then generate a magnetic field because those charges are moving. All right. Um, that's really cool. And the thing that's even more interesting is that it's not always in the same direction. In fact, every couple hundred thousand years, the magnetic field lines of the Earth flip, and it currently is looking like we're past due. So it's currently looking like at any time on Earth, our, our magnetic field lines on the Earth could actually flip again. And for a moment, we won't be protect, protected. Like right? as this is, is making its way around and, and things are shifting, we're not going to be as protected as we once were. And that's going to be an interesting scientific problem for us to explore and solve if that actually happens. In the video or in the module, I have a video that actually explores this idea of the direction of the magnetic field of Earth flipping over time. I encourage you to check it out. Um, all right. That is my intro to magnetic fields. You understand now that there is a magnetic field that we're bathed in just due to the Earth itself. And when we come back to the next video, we're going to talk about some fun facts about magnetic fields.